Aren't you glad you came here this morning? Oh, yes. <laughs> I am. Only I can't think of what I was going to talk about now. <laughs> but I'll do like I did tonight. I'll start with a bad joke. Oh. You know my bad jokes? Oh. You, love you love my bad jokes. <laughs> Police Academy. It's the graduation and it's the final exam. And they ask the cadets the questions in order to graduate. And one of the questions is, what would you do if we told you to arrest your own mother? And one of the cadets thought for a second and said, call backup. <laughs> and the divine mother dwells within you. And we in unity understand that everything in the Bible dwells within us. Everything in the outer world truly, we're a microcosm of the great spirit of God. And and that dwelling place of that spirit is in our heart. If you want to know where to find God, you look within your heart. Just imagine what's the center of you. Look at me. This is the center of me. Right there in the heart. You go to the center. Remember during the meditation I shared something that I'd seen online this week. Somebody was sharing about being a child and you know, one of those merry-go-rounds that are pushed in the playground and there'd always be an older kid who was a lot stronger and would push it so fast that you'd be on the end and you'd almost fly off. And you couldn't stop it and they wouldn't stop. So what would you do? You'd go to the center. Where relatively speaking, it's calm and, and, and clear. And you think to yourself, what good is that going to do me? I need to be out here fixing things. No, you don't. You don't need to be flying off. You need to come into the center. And how do you do that? You do that through your meditative practices. And no, oh, boy, there he goes again. But it isn't that hard. You've got something built into your bulletins, this invocation. You can take the invocation and there's a wonderful method that I used for years where you take a, a memorized prayer or something like this and you just do it line by line. But you take a line out loud, then you take it silently, and then you feel it. And then you go on to the next line. You say, well, how's that going to do anything for me? I remember years ago, 20 years ago, I was in a situation where I'd come into a very large organization I was supposed to be in charge, and I didn't know anything about what was going on, so I asked them if they would, you know, uh, audit their books so I could know what was going on. So, it turns out they'd done their books in little shoe boxes. Nothing had been done in any kind of orderly way at all, and, and the auditor said, I can't even begin to do it. i got to bring in a bookkeeper to fix it all up. Two or three years later, we still had done it. And, and, but worse than that, it turned out that that bookkeeper, who was an honest person, but not particularly competent, had not only not put things into order, but they hadn't even been keeping the books, and we were headed towards a tremendous financial crisis and crunch we didn't even know about, whereupon she took all of our books and all of our documents and flew 5,000 miles away <laughs> and took them with her. Oh my gosh, what are you going to do? And now here we are headed for it. We don't even know what's coming up. So what did I do? I went to a cabin in the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> And I did some meditation. I already, had already planned this, this, this retreat, but that's what I was using. I, what I did was I took the Lord's Prayer. I took the 23rd Psalm. I took the prayer for protection that we end our services with. Uh, I took this, this invocation from Charles Fillmore. I took a couple of other prayers that I knew and memorized that I really liked that were affirmative. And I would take a line and say it out loud. Then I would go into saying it silently. And then I would feel it. And I just did that. I just intuitively, I knew that's what I needed to do. How many of you have ever read the pamphlet or the book by uh, Emmett Fox, The Golden Key? Raise, raise your hand. The Golden Key is all about, if you got a problem, let go of the problem. Don't try to solve it. Don't even try to solve it spiritually. Once you've prayed about it, instead Golden Key it, which means turn it over and focus on God. Anytime a problem comes to your mind, just focus on God. And this is a way to do that. To get into that clear space, that clear thing, the center of the cyclone. So I did that, and while I was gone, somebody came forward with the funds to bridge us to the solution of the problem. And the interesting thing was, see, these kind of breakdowns happen for a reason a lot of the time, 
because an old form is stuck and rigid and calcified and won't break down any other way. And it's not always convenient, but we're addicted to our convenience. We're addicted to our comfortableness, our comfort zone. And instead, what needed to happen here was a breakdown of the old forms, and nobody was going to be willing to do that because they'd been doing it in shoeboxes for so long. And what we needed to do was to bring in financial controllers. So I was able to come back and have justification to bring in a financial controller. We've got all the books, not only in order, but the same person's there now doing it 20 years later, and everything has been fabulous ever since. They've had no problems. It's been wonderful. And as for the books that were 5,000 miles away, she sent them all back. <laughs> We were able to get through it beautifully. There's a breakdown before the breakthrough. I accept my breakdown that leads to my breakthrough. Together, I accept my breakdown that leads to my breakthrough. Now, understand that that center within you that you go to, the center of the merry-go-round that goes around so fast, the center of the cyclone, that is your heart. And that's where you, what, experience the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there in the heart. The Holy Spirit is nothing more, nothing less than end user God. Your personal experience of God as an end user. It's the inspiration that you felt during that beautiful harmony. Mm -hmm. Or when you're dancing. Or when you're looking, you know, you're in the garden. I'm laying, oh, last night, laying in my hammock smelling the earth. Ooh. And the, and the smoke from the chimneys nearby. Oh. How can that be the Holy Spirit? How can it not be the Holy Spirit? Remember what the Native Americans said. They complained when the missionaries came because they said, you're separating to the priests. You're separating out the spiritual and the, and the rest of life. You're trying to make the religion on Sunday and the rest of... Whereas they understood things to be a sacred whole. Myrtle Fillmore used to say that the Native Americans understood Christianity a lot better than Christians did with their great spirit and their earth mother. And the earth mother, the divine mother, that divine mother within you is the Holy Spirit. Without getting too sharp a point on the historical significance of it, in the Old Testament, in the Book of Wisdom, in the Proverbs, talks about Sophia, wisdom. Yes, the Hebrews had a mother God. And it's right there, Sophia, wisdom, the mother aspect of God. And that evolved by Christian times into the Holy Spirit. That's what that mother aspect, it is that mother that will take you up in her arms and hold you in the center of the cyclone when you're going through a difficult time and you can't make sense of things. And the outcomes will work out beautifully. And often things need to break down in order to create a space for something new. Things need to break down to be built up. And what do you do during that time? You get held in the arms of your mother. And one way to do that is to take your little affirmation, take it in a line at a time, say it out loud, say it silently, then feel it. That's all I did for four days. I came back and everything had changed. Different outcomes. My, my, my old friend, he, he was in a family business? You ever been in a family business? He had three brothers. One of them had addiction problems. Another one had codependency problems. And the third one, I don't know what his problem was. But they were always fighting all the time. And he said, he came to him. To, he saw the picture of the cyclone. And he saw himself in the eye where there is no wind. Everything is still. And he said, I just needed to be there in my sacred center and let it whip. <laughs> let it whip. I let it whip. Together. I let it whip. And when it reforms, it will reform and reconfigure in a new form that will benefit you much better. And sometimes it's necessary, like in that situation with the bookkeeping, we could never have brought in this financial controller. We found this guy. This guy. Um, he, was the, he was the chief financial officer retired for Comcast for the whole Southeast United States. Oh, and he was retired. I mean, where, where did he come from? He just came in and he's still there. <laughs> Myrtle Fillmore wrote, those who would... No, that's Charles Fillmore. That's the wrong quote. <laughs> Myrtle Fillmore wrote, all of us sooner or later come into the place of our development where we are no longer satisfied to go on living our old life. And sometimes when we reach this point in our progress of the soul, we don't know at first what's really taking place. We become restless and dissatisfied. 
We may go through experiences that we do not understand. We may be tempted to think that our good has been taken away from us. But just as surely as God is the one presence and power, we shall find that we're going from one smaller room, as it were, into another larger and lighter room. you got to make room. Remember when you want to expand your house, you got to knock down a wall. And sometimes there's some disruption and some dust. You have to go through that. So what do you do that time? Go into your sacred space. Go into your sacred center. Know where the center is. It's right here. I often tell about the time when my heart opened, where I, everything in my life broke down, and I asked help, and it, my, I, I had the words from Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart. And what resulted was not only a solution to all my problems, if I went into my heart and I got quiet, but I started listening to the guidance there and it led me to go into the ministry 20 years early. I was going to go into the ministry in, the 40, in my 40s. I ended up going in my 20s. So I had 20 more years of that. It's not about getting a specific outcome, but that was in a higher order. How do you, how do you open up to a new thing? Sometimes you have to let go of the old thing. How do you let go of the old thing? Sometimes it has to break down. What do you do while it's breaking down? You go into your sacred center. You go into that quiet space. You go to that place in your heart. And you have to do it yourself. You really do have to do that yourself. You get a lot of help. You get a lot of help in moving there. You get back up. You'll get all kinds of support. But you will find that Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit won't be your experience until I'm gone. When I go, then you'll experience it. But unless I go, you won't experience it. Why? Because they were even looking to Him personally as their source. And they had to let go even of that very high level outer form of security. And sometimes the breakdown is what it required for us to let go of that. Now I can read this Charles Fulmore quote. <laughs> Those who attempt to learn of this Holy Spirit by reading or learning it from teachings of others will fail. The Holy Spirit only comes to those who earnestly seek. If you depend for your spiritual enlightenment on some book or church ritual or doctrine or some teacher or leader, do not expect to have the Holy Spirit. It is a state of prayer alone in the upper room, the state of high spiritual aspiration that brings it. And that Holy Spirit is the mothering aspect. It's the divine mother within you. It is a mothering aspect. It is the great mother of God, of life itself, the great mother of the universe that wants to hold you in her arms and nurture you. It is that divine mother. And you experience it through inspiration, through upliftment, through support, through, through nature, through music, but most significantly through the quiet space that dwells within your heart. Myrtle Fillmore, well, what is the nickname in Unity for Myrtle Fillmore? The Mother of Unity. And she earned that. She was truly a mother figure for many people in Unity. But when the date came, when she was, I think it was 1931, she was in her 80s, and she was in good health, and she went from desk to desk, 80-something desks in silent unity, and she had somebody behind her with dozens of roses, and she put a rose in every vase and said goodbye to every single person and told them, I'm going home now, and I'm going to make my transition. I'm going to pass this away. I'm going to die. And they say, you can't do that. You're the mother of unity. And she wrote something for them. She said, it is my great joy to perceive somewhat of the mother side of God. This divine love that never fails is equal to the drawing of souls to itself. It is my prayer to be able to radiate these qualities of divine love to all. But you are the mother of unity. Because in your own heart you have the same ideals, the same great generous spirit, the endless and tireless service, and the love that never fails. The mother of unity is the universal mother. And how happy all of us are to represent this universal love. And she went home. Two days later, she just fell asleep. She was gone. She knew, she said elsewhere, that she would be able to help more all those souls from the other side of life than from this. Hmm. How do we look at life? How do we look at life? Do we look at life according to clinging, clinging? Somebody said everything I let go of had claw marks all over it. You know that we, we have to let go. We have to let go. I release and I let go. Together, I release and I let go. 
let it go, let it go, let it be. Let it be. So what is it? What is it in your life that you need to let go of? What is it in your life that you need to let be? What is it that you that you have to release? I remember once on a Saturday night, about eight o'clock, I got a phone call and it was from a man who I'd never met. He said, when I was a child, I was raised in this church and I haven't been back for many years, but my son is dying. <coughs> he had a go-kart accident and his, um, his, his, although it didn't show anything, um, you know, any kind of outer damage, um, it, it, he's bleeding internally and, and, and they've removed most of his liver and, and they, they, they want to turn off life support. My wife won't let him. And I, I need you to come and talk to her and, and pray with us. And so I drove down there, and I'd never met these people. In fact, they, I don't think they came to church one time after that. That was all I saw of them. But there, there was the boy. He was unconscious, and they removed all, they removed so much of his liver that even if that they could stop the bleeding, which they weren't able to do, they would not. He would not survive. And the mother said, I, I don't understand it. I know, I know this makes no sense at all. But I've been praying and I know that this happened because she and her husband had been fighting for so long. She says, I know this came into our lives to make us grow up and stop and, 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 and work our things out. And, and I know he's going to live. I know he's going to be well. I know this. And she wouldn't turn off the... And I thought she was wrong. I really did, honestly. But I was supportive. And she kept her prayer work going. And we prayed for the highest good. Six weeks later, the kid was back in school. He was in middle school. He didn't have enough liver to live, but he survived. And three years later, I heard that he was still doing well. I haven't heard anything since. But she knew. She let it go. She did the work. And she followed her guidance. You know that old serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Sometimes I'll just say, God, I'm just going to give this to you, and if there's anything for me to do, make it really obvious. <laughs> and until then, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> this came from an experience I had many years ago, about 30 years ago, where everything was whipping around and breaking down and everything, and what came to me was, Unless it comes to you, don't touch it. That was really hard to do because I thought I could fix things. And there was one or two things that I thought, well, if I just do this one thing. And every time it would blow up. And then I would let it go. And to the extent that I let it go, it would work out. The Divine Mother is in you. The mothering aspect of God is in you. You know, almost every week I talk about the seven steps. We have copies of it outside of Fellowship Hall. But the way it came about was that Jane Elizabeth Hart will be here in about a month. Her mother died. And her mother and she were very close, and this was very sudden. And it was springtime, about this time of year, and she loved her garden. She was in Ohio. And she'd go out to her garden, and, and it would be so filled with happiness. And the garden, all the flowers, it all looked flat, it all looked dead to her, it meant nothing to her. And she realized she was stuck in grief. And she said, what do I do? And this picture came into her mind of seven steps with the different names of the steps labeled. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. I'm all better now. And she went out to her garden and it still looked flat and still looked dead. And she asked, well, what's going on? And the next day what came to her was, you've got to do your journaling. You've got to take your mother up the seven steps. And so she did. It took her about three, four days. And when she was done, one beautiful rose bloomed in her garden. This may seem really a woo-woo story, but it's her story, not mine. <laughs> she never had planted a rose in that garden. There had never been a rose in that garden. And there wasn't one the next year. Just one bloom. Her mother's middle name was Rose. Oh. That Divine Mother will take care of you, will nurture you. But you have to bring yourself back to that center. You've got to bring yourself back to that point of support. 
I know it may seem lofty and spiritual and far away, but it's not. Just take one idea. I'm going to ask you to, to just take this little, this little sheet home with you, but I want you to take it out right now. And I want you to just join with me, and what we're going to do is we're going to feel what it feels like to take something like this so if you've got a problem, if something's whipping around you, let it whip. And I'm, I'm going to ask you to just do this and I'll show you how, how to do it. I am now in the presence of pure being. Together. I am now in the presence of pure being. Now say it silently to yourself. And now feel it. And immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. Together. And immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. And silently. And feel it. I acknowledge your presence and your power, O oh blessed Spirit, together. I acknowledge your presence and your power, O oh blessed Spirit, and silently. And feel it. In your divine wisdom, now erase my human limitations. Together. In your divine wisdom, now erase my human limitations. Silently. And feel it. And from your pure substance of love, together. And from your pure substance of love, and silently. Feel it. Bring into manifestation my world according to your perfect law, together. Bring into manifestation my world according to your perfect law. Silently. Feel it. And know by moving from the circumference to the center, from the whipping around to the silence, All the outcomes are working out differently now. <clears throat> You've been downloaded with new guidance. To the silent mind, the whole universe surrenders, said Eckhart Tolle. And know that things are different now, because you are different now. And so it is. Amen. So you can take this with the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm, our prayer for protection we close the service with, anything, anything. You don't have to know how to meditate, you don't have to know how to pray, you don't have to know how to do anything. It's called the golden key. Just take your attention away from the circumference, put it in the center, and let it go. Take a deep breath and let it out. You know that you are in the center, the sacred center. There seems to be a cyclone in your life. As my friend used to say, I let it whip. Just let it whip around you, but you're in the sacred center, in the eye of the storm. Charles Fillmore said, nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul.
So move to the center. Someone shared with this week that we were children, we would go in the playground and there would be a hand push merry-go-round and someone would push it very fast, somebody bigger than us. And if we were on the edge of it, we would almost fly off. The only thing we could do is go to the center. Perhaps it's not ours to slow it down or to change anything in the outer, but we can go to the center and find our peace. And what we find is that we move into clear thinking, a sacred space, the peace that passes all understanding, and nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. I move into that center. the heart where all is still all is one I may not realize it but this is the most powerful prayer I can pray there is much going on in my outer world events and politics and people and circumstance. I may not be able to control everything, but I can move into my center. Where nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. And here in the eye of the storm, great presence and power moves out. To bring about better outcomes. To harmonize opposites. And in this calm peace, in this sacred space, I recognize that sometimes things need to break down in order to create an opening in which something new can emerge. <clears throat> to be recreated in a new form. So I move to the center. Where there is the peace that passes all understanding. I move into the center. Where nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. breath, I let it out, and I feel this peace for just a moment, this calm. I move into my life <clears throat> having been downloaded with new guidance, new energy, new clarity, new calm. Most assuredly better outcomes 
will result. I trust, I hold to my center that nurturing, mothering, loving arms of God in which I am safe. And nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. <coughs> and so it is. Amen.